Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, The Making of a User and Abuser. The Making of a User and Abuser. When we look back and we see the evidence of what has occurred in our lives from childhood to adulthood. For some of you all, I know for myself, it's quite disturbing. When we look at our present day, oh, how grateful many of us are that we made it. We made it. We made it. When you look at your future, based on what your present looks like, is it bright? It may be for many of you all, but for some it is not because they are still carrying the individuals. They're still nurturing and doing for those who have a long history of being users and abusers. These individuals are doing for daddies and uncles and nephews and cousins. They are doing the types of things that for some of you all, we can talk about. For others, we can't say anything. What type of grip does a user and abuser have over a mind that shouldn't be doing and saying the types of things that the individual is saying? What type of power and control is being exerted on the victim? The rabbit hole is indeed very deep. Some folks as I said in another audio message, they get buried in the hole. There is no coming back out of the hole. Once the demonic has your mind, you're not able to do what you want to do. That's why for some folks, we tell them, don't go back, don't go back, don't go back. Because When you go back, it only gets worse over time, if not immediate, depending on who the user and abuser is. The opportunity was there to get away when there was the unexpected family situation. The opportunity was there to get away when the police were called. The opportunity was there when a relative stood up in your defense. The opportunity was there when the dog started freaking out and ran the abuser away. The opportunity was there when children rose up and beat that abuser. You know what? Come on. Get away, get away, get away. God allows so many different circumstances, doesn't he? So that people will get away. So that people will pick up and move on. So that people can be able to disappear from that abuser. No, you can't find out the name, the location, nothing. Some folks haven't even begun to try because their mind is held in captivity. They are physically oppressed. Their spiritual eyes are blind. They can't see. Held in captivity because I got your wallet, your bank account. I got your children. I got your stuff. I got your house. I got your car. I got the things that you love or like the most. This is why a long time ago, the Lord spoke to me and he said, break away from the things. Let them go. And I was like, but get away. Just get away. And I didn't. I guess some of you all thought I was going to say and I got away. Mm -mm. No, it took about seven times seven times so that national average of how many times it takes to get away from an abuser 
a user yeah for some individuals it's 10 it's 15 it's 20 plus times it's never for some they went to the grave still attached to the abuse of one I was attached to my stuff I don't have the car I don't have a driver's license I don't have I need him to help me get my stuff out what you're going to ask the abuser to help you leave <laughs> that was the wrong move because the next thing you know there was arguing and then there was abuse again Well, I, I want to go. You want to go? Mm hmm. Okay, we're going to make it good this time. How does a smart person end up in the arms of an abuser? And then we're going to get into the making of the user and abuser. You get caught up because there's something missing in your life. Something. Some basic need. Something that should have been met years ago whether it was an emotional need that came from a mother or a father or a physical need that came from a mother or a father something was amiss it didn't matter that you were so book smart because the user and abuser just looks at that as you're dumb but you say no 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 because i got good grades i've got you know certificates all of that no because you're not street smart now some folks they're book smart and they're street smart I learned my street smarts the hard way but I learned but when you're in a sheltered environment and all you know is book 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 you see you try to play things in a book sense but you don't know anything about how the street goes or you think you know until you're caught up with the abuser and then you realize you messed up and now you're trying to make excuses or you think you're going to outsmart the abuser and the abuser's like, uh, I've been working on your mind back when you trusted me months ago. And that's why you're so worried and so fearful about leaving right now because I've already worked on making you stay. I got you in your weak moment. I got you during that time where you needed a friend. During that time where you needed your basic needs met like food, shelter, water. Bills paid. He wasn't just paying bills just to pay bills. He was paying bills to win over your trust. This is for someone. He wasn't just picking you up from work. Because he just love you so and he just can't can't stand the fact that there's other people out there looking at you. He did that to build trust. He wasn't just flattering you, talking about how sweet and nice and kind and beautiful you are. He had to build what? Trust. Now you get it. And now your mind starts thinking about all the things that he has done recently to draw you in. He wasn't just giving you scripture verses just to give you scripture verses and talking about the Bible just to talk about the Bible to you. He had to win your trust. Come on. He wasn't just inviting you out for drinks and food just because there had to be trust because see the last one got away. The last one he threw away. The last one ran away. The last one had family that came over and whooped his behind. He may have served jail time for the last one. But now I got new prey. So if I got to talk about praying <laughs> to draw prey, P-R-E-Y, that's what he does. See, these were hard truths that the elders were speaking ever so kindly at times and ever so harshly at other times. But I was convinced that this person was good because he hadn't hit me yet, because he hadn't choked me yet, because he hadn't spit on me yet, because he hadn't covered me with a pillow yet, because he hadn't persuaded me into doing some things with my body 
that God did not design my body for? How was he created? What's his story? A man or a woman who is a user and abuser had already been used and abused at some point in their life. And they decided that never again will I ever be at somebody's feet. I will get them before they get me. Sometimes it's all learned behaviors. It's just the young boy or the young girl in that atmosphere learning. Learning from the mother or father how to argue, how to fight, how to get someone to submit, how to drag them across the floor by their hair and beat them senseless. And then they get up and they go into the kitchen and they cook like they supposed to cook. That's somebody's story. How to be able to get someone to be so weak in the mind that after beating them, telling them to go in a room and have sex, that's somebody else's story. You're seeing these things unfold. For some individuals, you won't be able to listen to this message much longer because it's a trigger message. And if you don't have those triggers in check, you haven't gotten necessary, necessary counseling, healing, you're just going to circle right back into your grief, your depression, your anxiety. So no, you don't need to continue to listen. If anything, go in a prayer. And even if you are going to continue to listen, you still need to go in a prayer. Because the enemy will take what a teacher says, what a prophetess says, what a counselor, a doctor, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a minister says, and turn it in such a way to make you think that that message is not good, it's not beneficial to you. And meanwhile, it was God himself using us mere vessels to tell you what you need to do to protect yourself or to protect others who may be going through, who you may suspect. The making of an abuser, when he sat there and told me about the abuse that he had, incurred and when I asked him about help and counseling and so forth and he didn't have a yes on it that was my red flag to move on to move on I can't do anything with a broken spirit other than to pray because broken spirits have a way of using and abusing you because they went through some of you all who are listening, you're guilty as charged for using and abusing. Some of the folks that you just broke up with, got kicked out the house. Where'd you learn it from? Let's be honest. Let's stop, you know, sugarcoating, talking about daddy was so wonderful and great. And mama, she was so sweet when we know that they had been abused or they had witness abuse or they had been in the next room and they chose to cover their ears but they knew that there was abuse in the other room that's a broken spirit that's a broken soul trying to help other people but hasn't been healed yet i had to go through various deliverance ministries in order to get to a place where i could be able to talk to you all today and other audio messages because I got many of them on abuse. There was a time where there was no words coming out my mouth. I was just quiet. I'm not going to talk to you about anything that I had experienced. I just wanted to go away. I'm not going to even acknowledge those that have gone through. I'm not going to tell them what they should do concerning their relationship. That's their business. Mm hmm. When you're not ready to face something, when you're not ready to heal from it, when you're still running from it, you don't want to talk about it. And that's okay because that's your own survival mechanism until you are free, until you are ready to speak the truth that needs to be spoke about that individual. The making of this user and abuser, not only did he or she witness behaviors growing up, but he or she embodied those behaviors and started acting those behaviors out on the dolls, on the toys, being destructive, 
Some of you all, you remember some of your nieces and nephews. You remember some of your uh, brothers and sisters, how reckless they were with toys. Broke up yours too. <laughs> Come on. What's up with them? Why are they acting so just because there is the aggression that has to come out? What do I do with this pent up rage, this fear, this worry, this stress? Snatch the head of the doll off. Take the car, the toy car, rip the wheels off, throw it up against the wall. Frustrated, easily frustrated, impatient, hard to talk to, can't concentrate, not a very good student. Or the over-the-top student. Because <laughs> some folks tend to associate all that overachievement as so smart, so, you know, whatever you want to paint that person to be. Let me tell you, I'm, I was the overachiever. I was the one that couldn't get enough activities, enough activities, because I felt powerless looking at the women who were going through with these men. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's where my power is. I'm going to just devote all my attention to these activities. I may not be the smartest, brightest student when it came to grades, but guess what? I am going to master Connecting with people, having fun, teamwork makes the dream work, you know, being a part of this club and that one. Because I feel powerless in other areas of my life. Can't speak, can't go here, can't do this. And so while all of that was happening, who was being made behind closed doors? A future user and abuser. That's why I was very upset before I got saved, sanctified, and Holy Spirit filled. Who are you to judge and talk about me when you made me? Who are you to accuse me of, ooh, you're no good and you this and you're that when you made me? Because I watched you, abuser and user. You had your way of manipulating situations. Whether you manipulated those situations with your own mother, whether you manipulated situations with your wife, whether you manipulated situations with your girlfriends, because some of my uncles at the time were young enough, and Lord knows I was young enough to pay attention at the games that they played with the different women. And they were all black women. All of those black women that had been used and abused. And little did I know that I was going to grow up to end up being used and abused. And then once I got out and about, I learned that not just black women get abused and used, but there's white women and Asian women and Filipino women and Italian women. all sorts internationally the women who have come through here from the UK it's unreal it's unreal the stories that people have shared your mind is blown by those stories. Your mind doesn't want to believe. That's why I said it's unreal. But it is very much real. It's very much real. So here, the one who's in the making to be the abuser and user who has learned a thing or two, who has embodied the frustration, the anger, the upset, the difficulty, even when there is no, let's say, physical abuse that they've witnessed, but there's just tension in the air and there's the silent treatment and there's the mean spiritedness and the talking smart mouth. So the tension is there and the one who's witnessing that sort of thing will embody that. So now you got the passive aggressive nature with friends, with cousins. I love you today. I hate you tomorrow. I'm going to pay you back 
for what? I really didn't say or do anything. I'm just going to pay you back. Because I didn't like the way you made me feel. And when there's lack... There's lack of finances, there's lack of affection, there's lack of emotion. You see these sort of things playing out. You don't like lack. So what do you do? You try to get and get and get and get some more. Let me see what I can get. Let me see how much I can get. And you got to be the best at everything you do. Whether it's good for humanity or it's bad for humanity, you got to be the top dog. And why? Because once again, there's the voice that you're trying to fill. Some of the making of the user and abuser strategies and tactics were by design. Most of what parents are doing, they don't realize what they're doing, what they're creating. They're too busy working. They're too busy into their projects. They're too busy into each other. They're too busy doing everything else. So they don't even know what they're creating upstairs, down in the basement, around the corner, in the room, down the hallway. They don't even have a clue. But some parents do. They do. They know exactly what they're creating. Because the occult affiliation, because of the oaths that they took, because of their connections and affiliations. Oh, this one is going to be. And that is whatever the establishment wants that child to be. So there's many tentacles on the octopus, if you will. It's not just the octopus and its head, but it's the many arms that are involved in the making of that future user and abuser. And sometimes it doesn't start in childhood. Sometimes you reach a place in your life where so much tragedy and trauma has happened that you're almost like a child. And so, hey, perfect candidate, along comes the abuser and user to manipulate that mind a bit, to recruit you. To get you to be just like him or her. Got to catch you at a weak moment, not a strong one. You see. As I was witnessing some things and embodying some of the evil. And then, of course, getting to know some of the folks around me that were young like me. You tend to act out on one another. I see your weakness, you see my weakness. I don't like you, you don't like me, or I like you today, but I don't like you tomorrow. And so there's this portion pool, there's fights with siblings that really you shouldn't be fighting, but you do fight. Really, it's not that serious, but mm, I think it is. And everybody else around you is saying, why are you treating your brother or your sister that way? And you don't even realize some of the things that you're saying or doing. But it was whatever behaviors that you saw, whatever behaviors that you experienced. And now there's that innocent one over in the corner playing, minding their own business. And the brain does a thing or two. The body does a thing or two. And now you're going in on that one like prey. Like a leopard going after its prey. And now there's a traumatized sibling. As the user and abuser is gaining momentum and learning more things and has a string of victims starting to develop or has already conquered, discarded, and looking for new victims somebody's paying attention and somebody may call that one out on the strange behaviors the weirdness the abuse or they may encourage it some parents suspect what they have brought into this world is nothing more than evil 
some individuals who are critics of what they're seeing out there in the street and elsewhere have called the truth for what it is, the truth. There are those that cannot be helped. There are. And what society chooses to do with those individuals, well, that's up to society. I'm not going to give suggestions. (laughs) But there are those that cannot be saved. The Lord himself has showed us time and time again that I have to separate you. He didn't say take the person out and then separate. He just said, I have to separate you. I've got to remove you. Now, in some situations, you may have to do something to get yourself out of harm's way. But when God is calling us to separate ourselves or to no longer be affiliated with, no longer to connect, there's good reason for that. But the one who is in the making, he wants to stay seated before the pimps and the players and the hustlers. The one who is in the making that the demonic has his or her hand on is partying like the rock star every now and again, acting like a complete heathen until his or her mind that was once innocent, once ready to help has broken down. And now all you got is just another user and abuser. You cannot be in the company of corrupt people and think that you're going to stay innocent and stay on your game and stay on your agenda or your plan. The demonic's minions are put in a believer's path to systematically destroy. Sometimes God will allow it because he's simply saying your time is done. It's over with. You've done all that you could do in this dimension. I'm taking you out of here. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Other times. God has his angels fighting day and night because it is not your time. It is not your time. User, abuser. But you will reap the consequences. You will have to deal with all of what you put other people through sooner or later. And some of us, that's why we went through like we did. Because we had said or done some things, whether knowingly or unknowingly. But we know that what is in darkness comes out in the light. And you do reap what you have sown. All of us at some point in our lives are going to reap what we have sown. Whether you were harsh and strict and difficult with a child. Whether you were systematically coming up with all sorts of programming to use and abuse others. Whether you were riding in the passenger seat with the user and abuser and aiding them in the destruction, paybacks are you know what. I don't want this to come on me. I mean, something from years ago or please tell me that I'm not going to have to reap any more than what I've already reaped, Nicole. I can't tell you that. God He has a work that he is doing in so many individuals. And sometimes in order to manifest the goodness out of you, a whole lot of negativity has to show up and shake you up from the top of your head to the soles of your feet or shake those around you. You may be used to shake the users and abusers around you by the truth that you finally have the courage to speak. And of course, they're not going to like you. And of course, they're going to want your head. And of course, they're going to talk all sorts of evil about you. And God hears. And that's why God is dealing with some of those individuals. Because you can only talk but so bad about the people of God before destruction falls upon you. Whether it's self-destruction, whether it's someone that you've just met your match. 
whether it is natural causes, whatever the case may be, things have a way of happening. Things have a way of happening. The one who is in the making has not only seen some type of physical abuse, experienced some type of emotional abuse, sexual abuse, spiritual abuse, what have you, but he or she has also listened to the lies, the secrets, and the cover-ups, and now is doing the same thing with himself or herself or the family. We got a timeline of the lies. We know that this month, the user and abuser said this. And then another month, the user and abuser did this. And we've noticed a pattern of foolishness over the last decade or so. Users and abusers, as they age, and the ones who are in the making as they age, they can't keep up the act. Because, see, somebody after a while gets tired of the charming personality and how long it takes to get the prey to show up and be beneficial to me and all that. That victim oh, is just getting on my nerves. So let's just get straight to the point. And so he's moving in quick because he doesn't want to spend up all his money and all his time. And he already did it with how many other women. So at this point, he just wants to get straight to the point. And so for users and abusers, they're thanking the app makers who come up with all these different dating sites every day. Oh, the hit it and quit it app. Yes. Oh, the, you know, no last name app. <laughs> I'm just making up stuff, but you know what I mean? They just, you know, you made their work easier. You made their work easier. It doesn't have to take a long list of activity for them to finally hold their victims in captivity. A moment of silence. My heart is heavy for those led astray. Those who just wanted to jump on an app and just have a good time. And now they're having the worst times of their lives as we speak, held in captivity. Lord Jesus. The one who is still being groomed to be the abuser and user. As I said, something in their life went amiss. Food, shelter, comfort, trust, love, safety. Time and time again, year after year after year. And now you're expecting somebody who, ex who went through so much to be like someone you saw in a movie, like some fantasy in your mind of what you believe a woman should be to a man or what a man should be to a woman. Somebody has high hopes for somebody who has been abused. You better stop putting that pressure on that person. He is only going to be what he is if he refuses help, counsel, change, deliverance, true deliverance, casting out a demon's kind of deliverance, staying up all hours of the night type of deliverance until them demons come screaming out, not uh, what is it, an hour and a half, two, three hour service, and then send them back home? Mm -mm. Somebody who needs to be on medication because everything else didn't work. 
manic episodes, highs and lows, up and down. People get tired of that. They're not going to keep putting up with that. Even police officers will show up and go, let's just lock them up. You see. Some of you all, you've witnessed, whether young or old, going through their share of challenges time and time again and you see the future or you already experienced some things with that person and that's why you've asked the Lord to keep me far away I don't want no parts of that person I don't want to sit at their table I don't want to care for them you don't you don't hold their title up like that no matter what the title is over your safety I'm going to say that again. I don't care what the title is. You don't hold them up and put your safety at risk. Because some people keep traveling to houses where abusers and users are. And each time they walk in that atmosphere, the demons are climbing on them. And words are being said. And the temptation is there. For you to freak out and go off and do something that you end up in jail for. I couldn't take it any longer. I just couldn't go over there no more. I was about to lose my mind. But that sure don't matter. It does not matter. Don't let them people tell you to keep going over somewhere where your safety is at risk. Don't let people keep convincing you that that person is not going to hurt you. When you know that that person got a long track record of hurting people. What makes you so special? There have been favorites that thought that they were safe, that they were good, that that person would never freak out. And the next thing you know, they freaked out. A woman told me that adult, an, an adult that had a disability who did not have a track record of hurting people, okay, decided one day to go off on her. And she said, he just out the clear blue. I hadn't done anything, said anything. You know, one of those real kind souls just want to help people, right? And he broke her rib cage. Okay. He had been used and abused to the point where it made him mentally disabled. And whatever happened in his mind that day, he decided to crush this woman's rib cage by squeezing her as hard as he could. And you all, some of you all, not all, go into the presence of people who have been in settings years before you that traumatize their minds. That have gotten themselves affiliated with various professions that have traumatized their minds. People have warned you, told you that relative is weird, that relative is strange, that relative is difficult. I don't advise you to come over here by yourself. But, oh, you're going to brave the elements. You're going to go ahead and do some things. And that might be the very day that your life comes to an end. You better stop ignoring people when they tell you things. And stop being that one that says things like, oh, you're just paranoid or whatever. Because God will put us up to warning people. That child that you brought in, you may not know the complete history of what's going on. But could be. One that's in the making. A user and abuser. Think of all the parents who spent hours upon hours with children. Thinking they knew their children. And one day the child gets a hold of some drugs or alcohol. Or maybe something just clicks wrong in their mind. An undiagnosed personality disorder of sorts. And they jump on our parent and kill them. Those stories are out there. Maybe some folks need a refresher. The making of a user and abuser. Not everybody is scary, right? We know that. Those of us who <laughs> came face to face. There was nothing intimidating about most of the people that I've referenced over the years. They were just like you and me. Just people that, hey, how you doing? You know, looking good. You know, this type of thing. 
but whatever happened behind closed doors with their partners and their children that sent them into crazy makingville there's people that walk around that got the scars to prove it and i'm one of them so don't sit up here and tell me that everything is all kumbaya just because you haven't had a run-in with the user and abuser. Uh, don't tell me that, well, you know, that's a little far-fetched. You know, the making of a user and abuser, who would do such a thing? Or, no, that's just a child. You'd be surprised at the type of children that are in this world that are trained to blow your head off. You'd be surprised at the type of children that are trained to pick your pocket. The type of children that can be able to do a thing or two. To hack into all sorts of systems. Don't think for one minute that grandmama and granddaddy and uncle and auntie and oh, they so old and they don't know anything. Don't think for one minute that they have lost their minds. Some, some know how to play the game. Some folks, yeah, they've literally lost their minds, but some folks know how to play the game. That's part of being the user and abuser. They know how to, oh, pity me. I remember one who told me, matter of fact, no, quite a few older people told me that they will play that. They'll play that card. I used to hear them at one of the recreation centers talk about the things that they would do to get their kids to do things. <laughs> That's why that book tell me, mother, you're sorry. I was around the moms that were sitting up there talking about what they could do in order to get their children to do this and do that for them. I was around the old pimps, players, and hustlers, all dressed up nice, sitting around, playing pool, playing cards, and whatever else, and talking about how they had to teach somebody a lesson. So they may not be out there getting their hands dirty, but they put other people up to doing some things. And those other people get their hands dirty. The user and abuser manages to get what he wants when he wants it, how he wants it. And you don't suspect that there is the puppeteer behind the puppet. You just see that old man who he just minding his own business. And I, uh -huh, that's what he <laughs> wants you to think. Very, very sharp older people they tried that foolishness with me I said no nah, I'm sorry I know too much but can you mm -mm. I mean I had one she had tears coming down her eyes and her voice was shaky and I said uh-huh you still got to fill out this paper ma'am <laughs> but I just no 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 you still are going to be obligated to this responsibility here fill out the paper you see Oh, my kids, I can't, my kids, they're not here for me. See how the user is? No, too old to be abusing, right? Can't move around to wield that stick like you used to. Uh-oh. You can't box and punch and squeeze like you used to. But, oh, I'm so tired and I need somebody to help me with. But you know how to play that game though, right? Because you learned it from the ones that came before you. How they used to play on the emotions. And when you see that gullible, that weak-minded one. And you know that you play maybe that son or daughter. Then you get all upset when somebody is in their life that's playing them. Can't you see what he's doing? Don't, come on. Can't you see? No. The son or daughter can't see. Because he or she is comfortable with you and your manipulation. Of course the daughter or the son can't see. Oh, the manipulation was only supposed to be reserved for the parents of the adult son or daughter. They're the ones who's allowed to manipulate and control and power trip. But anybody else, mm-hmm. Yeah, it hurts you to the core when you see the same tactics that you use on your son or daughter are working perfectly with the one who they got married to or dating.
But do we want people to stay in these situations? No, that's why I am the one who encourages you to get away from, to get gone, to stay gone. And don't keep putting people up on some pedestal because you're getting God angry. And when you get God angry, because you keep talking about what your mama said, what your daddy said, and what this minister said, and who that, da, da, because it doesn't, the type of messages that I give don't tickle your ears. And you keep pushing back, you get you get God upset. And when you get God upset, you fall by that sword. You fall by it. the very sword that you, oh, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to fight my enemy. And nah, somehow you end up falling on your own sword. Where's God in all of this? God wanted to be there, but you pushed God out because you didn't want to see the truth because you didn't want to hear the truth. Because you may be guilty of making that future user and abuser. Oh, grandparent. Maybe it didn't work with your sons and daughters, but now I'm going to keep this one close. My favorite grandchild, you know, flattering. Oh, my favorite grandchild, this and that. And all the while using that child to move this, pick up this, go here, do this. And then once the parents realize what's happening, oh, no, you don't. And they get in that child's ear and they snatch that child away from you. And God allows that too, because you can't keep taking advantage of God's children and think for one minute or God's or the people of God's children's children and think for one minute that you're going to get away. Consequences of sin are terrible, aren't they? (laughs) That's why we can talk. I come back to tell you, I don't want you to get your butt whooping because this is what happened. You see, I don't come back here talking about, oh, you know, I just got it going on. No, I come back to warn some people. Um, God is whooping behinds today. Just want to let you know. <laughs> but God is a loving God, a kind God. You said that. Yes. But did you go back to the Old Testament? Uh, Yeah, he's still the same God. Same God all through the Bible. Have you heard the crackling of the thunder? Have you seen the power of the winds? Lord Jesus. Some folks had to lose everything, everything, because they said, I want to, I want to be different. I don't want to be a user. I don't want to be abuser. I don't want to be recruiting users and abusers. I want to do something different. And the Lord says, okay. And that house gets swept up in the wind. But, but, but no, 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 no. We got to start you all over again from scratch. I want to do better. This time it's going to be different. Okay. What's this? Divorce papers. You said you want to do something different, but I, I, I didn't want her to divorce me. I, sometimes that's what it takes. I want to do some things different. I, I just want my life to be better. Okay. Now the kids are being real disrespectful. What's up with the rise of disrespect? Oh, Lord Jesus. Sometimes you got to see your young self and your children for you to realize what you are doing, what you are creating, when you are not disciplining them, when you are fighting with the mother or fighting with the father about disciplining them. And you just happen to be the one that's so easy going, right? Spoiling the kids. You think that's cute? And God just allows those kids to rise up and they can be some of the vicious kids. Ooh, their tongues can be so sharp. You want to take back your parent role? Well, I thought I was always the parent. No, you've been a friend for the past, I don't know, months, weeks, years. I want my parent role. Okay, then you better take your rightful place and stop teaching these kids the things that you're teaching them, which is ungodly, unrighteous. They're looking at the way you talk to the other parent. They're looking at how you talk to the grandparent. They're looking at the other adults who you associate yourself with. So that's why they're so disrespectful. Exactly. You're sitting up there drinking with them, smoking with them, having fun with them. Mm. I don't see you as a parent, mom. Nope. You're a buddy. Isn't that what you wanted? Now suddenly you want to be a mom to me? Nah, I don't think so. You're still my buddy. I can't switch on and off like that, mom. I saw how you use daddy. So I'm going to go over there and I'm going to use daddy. Hey, daddy, can you buy me this? Can you get me this? Can you do this for me? You see? Your daddy is more than just somebody who you go and you ask for money. Huh? 
It's hard for me to see that, mom, because every time I turn around, whenever you have a conversation, it's always about money and about what you can get, what you can get, what you can get from daddy. You see, then she goes off and she finds somebody and now she's sitting up there talking about, oh, hey, babe. Yes, babe. You know, I really need, you know, just a few hundred dollars for what I want to go shopping Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, 500? Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Then when he doesn't have the money, what are you doing with your money? Who are you spending your money on? I just don't have the money. No, there must be somebody else. See what you're creating? Or maybe there is the one who you think it's okay to just slap somebody, right? Just slap them. She, oh, she's so disrespectful. Slap them. Because I had a couple of women in my family like that. Oh, they didn't mind slapping you. Doesn't matter if they knew you or didn't know you. You said what? Pat! It slapped you right across the face. Okay? So, the child sees this sort of thing. Oh, this is how we deal. Okay, I'm liking that. We taking it to the streets. Okay? <laughs> and then, clink, clink. Huh, looks like mom got away with slapping folks, but you didn't. Abusive. Some folks, it's not even about the physical. It's just about the verbal abuse, right? Just the cussing and fussing and you are so-and-so and I da 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 Okay, you just all up in the TV screen and elsewhere, right? Some folks were out there in the street cussing and fussing, acting like a fool, being verbally abusive. And then you wonder why that child acts the way he or she acts. Turn the situation around in Jesus' mighty name. I'm taking a moment right now to pray for the individuals who this message has resonated deeply with. I'm asking in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, that you just come upon this person in such a way that he or she will walk away from this message and will start making changes. Will start making changes and will no longer be that one that is crying and making excuses for will no longer be that one that's sitting up there aiding the user and abuser. No longer being that one that's making excuses for the abuse. Let it be, Lord Jesus, right now that this individual will come to you humbly asking for forgiveness, asking for mercy. And not only that, repenting repenting from his or her evil ways we're asking right now in the name of jesus let the generational cycle of using and abusing stop this day thank you lord jesus hallelujah thank you lord somebody you have that type of spirit within you right now that wants to do what's right you have accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You have allowed the Holy Spirit to come on in. And now you want God to do his work. It's going to take some reminders, whether it's a reminder on your phone or a reminder um, on, on, a, on a, a mirror to just keep you motivated, to keep you positive, to keep you from doing things that hurt other people. Some folks will have to leave professions where they know they're doing nothing but being paid to use people. We know that some individuals are going to have to get out of settings and away from people who are nothing more than examples of how to be an abuser. And so we need for people to see things for what they really are, to no longer believe the lies, the secrets and cover-ups, to no longer get their families involved with all of this foolishness and to be free in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube and I'm Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel and blessings to you.